All right. So for this week, um, the material is going to cover transactions. Um, and transactions are are these really actually super nifty tool, a uh, set of commands we can use to kind of control. Um, I like to think of them as like our like save and undo buttons a little bit, um, just the way they kind of work. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. But um, the word transaction itself, I think, kind of lends well to to kind of conceptualize what these are doing. So um, I, I always like to use money because that's largely, I think, why these exist. But um, just like if we ever if we ever do something, you know, like let's say we buy something, um, most of the times those those transactions are recorded and there's, you know, like a running list of every transaction. So like if you go look at your bank account, you can see all the debits and all the credits. Um, and and each one of those is is a transaction. Well, MySQL has a thing that basically it's logging every statement we run um, to a log. And as a result, it can kind of walk back some of that if we if we do things right. So um, to be frank, I'm not sure what it's called in MySQL, but in Oracle, um, they have a specific name for it. It's called the redo buffer log. Um, and that buffer log is like a set of instructions and they always visualize it like with a wheel. Um, so every time like you add like a command to this wheel, you know, it can kind of go. Um, but you don't want to like just do everything because like it is a buffer. Um, and so it's basically like having to keep track of quite a bit of data in this buffer. Um, but for short tasks, it's, it's really handy. Um, so anyways, let's, uh, let me, let me actually jump in here to our exercises. Um, and we'll just take a look here real quick. I think this one might just be multiple choice. Oh no. Okay. Perfect. Um, this is what I was hoping. So inside the exercise, we are going to, it's going to actually have you build, um, some tables. It's going to have us build, a a transaction table and an account table. Um, and it kind of walks you through it. And I guess for those of you here, I think I have like a little thing that might help you. Um, copy the clipboard. Let's just do the create statement. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, just give you this. So that way we don't have to, uh, don't have to worry about it. So let's see, where's the chat here? People who watch after will either have to uh, just copy it or hope someone will give it to them. So there's create table transaction. That'll save you a little bit of typing. And then also we want the account. All right, so those are the create table statements. I already have them, um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually delete everything in them. So um, let me just see what's in those. Select everything from transaction. Um, do you have stuff? So I'm gonna just say truncate transaction, and then we're gonna truncate account. Open. What do I have? Let's do this. Let's just do this delete. There we go. Don't truncate it since it's whining about it. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do in step one is we are going to generate a unit of work. And what it means by unit of work is actually kind of like a, a function or in this case, a procedure um, that's going to transfer $50 from one account to another. Um, it says we'll need to insert two rows into the transaction table and update two rows into the and update two rows in the account table. Um, 
so anyways, let's start with us building our accounts. So let's take a look here. I'm going to say select everything from account. Let's see what we need to put in here. Account ID, available balance, and last activity date. Why do I have stuff in there? There we go. Now we got them. Okay, so I'm going to insert this data, um, which is, so one, two, three, 500. I'm just gonna move this over to my other screen for reference, um, but it is just that little box that says with the following data. So we're gonna seed, and this is kind of just to get started. Um, we assume that there's already data in here. So um, insert, into account, we are going to insert account ID, available balance, and last activity date. And our values, we're going to say one, two, three, five hundred, and I'm just going to copy this because. Actually, let's just do this. We're going to say the last activity date was today. So we're just going to say current timestamp. That'll work. And then last one is 79. They only have $75. And we just put that money in there, essentially, or we will. So we're going to say current timestamp there as well. And now we should have our two accounts. There we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now to actually make this easier um, <clears throat> is I want to, I'm, I'm actually gonna build two, two work items. I'm actually gonna build one because it will almost be easier for me um, rather than just inserting them because I think you guys know how to insert data. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build one uh, procedure that's going to let us insert like it's going to be like a deposit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by saying I want to create. And this one gets a little, this can be a little weird depending on because of the syntax highlighting. So we're going to try it here though real quick. So I'm going to say create or replace procedure deposit. And what this deposit's going to do is we are going to let it put money into any given account. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we want to be able to just kind of say like, oh, here's the account ID and here is the amount of money that we want to, to deposit in there. So we're gonna create the de procedure deposit and then we're gonna give it some parameters to pass in. So I'm gonna say in is uh, account ID and it is a integer. And then I'm gonna say in amount, which is a decimal 15.2 pretty common uh, format. Cool. Um, deposit, I guess we can just add that. Very cool, okay, perfect, that's how we want it. Um, and then we can kind of say, so this is kind of like our procedure and now we want to kind of go into it. So um, I'm gonna say begin, which is kind of like our start, I guess, of our, uh, of our procedure, um, kind of like the start of our program, so to speak. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is I'm going to create a transaction. Um, and so I'm gonna say the way we start a transaction is, well, we can do one of two things. We can create a save point um, or we can just start a transaction. In this case, I'm gonna just say start transaction. 
And that kind of starts this process of like, oh, save what I'm doing in case I need to, to do something different. Um, and we need to put that there. Okay, so we're gonna start the transaction. And now what we wanna do is we want to put that money into the account. So we're going to insert into transaction. So the first thing we wanna do is insert into transaction. So you can imagine how, I guess, frustrating it would be if you went to Little Caesars and you were going to buy a pizza, right? And you go up to the counter, they say, yeah, I want hot and ready. They say, okay, that's, you know, 520 for, you know, plus tax. So, so 520, then you swipe your card and let's say like something happens and like all of a sudden, like, you know, their thing says, oh, you know, something went wrong and your card didn't work. So we're not going to give you the pizza. All right. Maybe it's like a network issue. Maybe it's something on little Caesars end. Maybe it's something on the bank's end. Like we don't know, but something breaks. And so you walk out of the door without your pizza and you're, you're upset. Well, you get home and you're, you, you know, you're like, why didn't my card work? So you log on to your bank and like all of a sudden you, you see that charge for five twenty from little Caesars, but you didn't get your pizza. Um, you know, you can imagine how, how frustrating that is. And so that's where transactions come in, especially with these kinds of things, because we want to make sure that everything stays in, in a state of harmony. Um, and what's unique about this case is we have our transactions, which are going to log all of our, um, like individual, like money traveling here to there. But we also have this account table that actually has the current balance. And we want to make sure that those stay in harmony. Um, and so what we want to avoid is that if the transaction doesn't go through, just like our, um, our example here, if the transaction doesn't go through, we don't want to like debit that money. We want to make sure that everything happens or nothing happens. And it's, that's called an all or nothing. Um, so we're going to insert into transaction. We want... Uh, we don't care about the TXN ID, um, transaction date, account ID, transaction type, CD, and amount. And we can kind of take a look at that sample data to kind of get an idea of um, kind of what we're looking for there um, as far as like the transaction types. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert our values and for the current date, we're just going to say current date. And actually, it's current timestamp, even though it says date. And transact our account ID is actually our, our account ID we're going to pass in. So the way we kind of handle that, where we, where we kind of passed it in, so to speak, is we can just reference um, that variable here. So we're going to say amount. And then... Uh, or sorry, account, not amount, account ID. Um, the transaction type is a credit. So we're going to put a C there and let's see if it's uppercase or lowercase. It's uppercase. And the amount is the amount that we're going to pass in. So we insert those and now we want to update our account. So I'm going to say update account set available balance equal to available balance plus amount where account ID is equal to account ID. And actually, let's uh, let's fix this. Um, to, I can't type. That way, we don't have like the same words, which is probably wise. So we're going to say to account ID and add amount. That way, it doesn't get confused. To account ID and add amount there. 
So on this one, we're basically going to take the current available balance. We're going to add what we deposited and we're all set. Um, once we do that, um, then we've completed everything we want to. Um, so then what we're going to do is we are just going to say commit. And commit is how we kind of lock it in. Now, once we run commit, there's no going back. Um, so it's important that we know exactly what we're doing. Um, make sure we have that, like at the end of everything we're going to do. Um, and then up here, one thing that I forgot to add, and let's make this a little bigger. One thing I forgot to add is that um, we want to do something if something breaks. So right after our begin, um, I want to kind of declare like a way to handle errors. So I'm going to say declare exit handler for SQL exception. Basically, this is like a little code block for if anything goes wrong, stop it. We'll just say that's uh, oh spaghetti <laughs> Um, That'll be our little thing there. And then once we're done, uh, end. All right, so here is our procedure. Um, and let's give this a shot, actually. So you'll notice whenever you make a procedure in Workbench, it actually kind of like freaks out. Um, it doesn't like a lot of the syntax. Um, these are called stored procedures. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click here and say create a stored procedure and you'll notice that it uh, kind of brings up this uh, thing here and this one the syntax highlighting should work should work properly. So I'm going to create the procedure. Give it a semicolon there. There we go. All right. So now we should be able to say, we're going to call this why won't you let me edit it? Well, apparently that doesn't let me edit. Let's just hit apply and see what happens. Sure. Let's go for it. Okay. So now we have this procedure created. And now, theoretically, I should be able to say call deposit. And we want to deposit money into account one, two, three. For the amount of $50. See if it works. Oh, and I think it's trying to uh, run this. So I'm just going to get rid of this for right now. There we go. Let's try to run that. And you'll notice I get this error and it says unknown column available balance in field list. So I probably just did something wrong. And if you look here, it's actually just avail underscore balance. So let's just fix that real quick. Avail underscore balance. There we go. Apply, apply. Whoops, let's try to fix that. And now let's give it a shot. And there we go. Um, you'll notice it says zero rows affected, but let's try it first before we get scared because it isn't a procedure from transaction. And there we go. You'll notice the transactions there. And if we select everything from our account, we should see $550 now instead of 75, which is pretty cool. Um, so whenever, you know, so we could run this, you know, over, um, let, you know, every time they come in. So that way we don't have to really worry about, you know, what's necessarily going on 
behind the scenes, we can kind of just do that nice little thing right there, uh, which is really nice. Now, let's say that there's an error, um, just to mimic one, like let's just add a four. Um, it'll fail, but, you know, we didn't really have, it shouldn't have added a transaction, which it wouldn't have been able to anyways, but um, but anyways, we kind of keep that isolated so everything happens. And I'm trying to think if there's a way we could break something um, that would actually show that it only works when it does. I guess we could do it manually. Let's uh, let's build out the next case manually. So the actual question in the in in the exercise is it wants to build a procedure that's going to um, that's going to not necessarily add just funds but it wants to be able to move funds so like in the example back to our little caesars it's going to move funds from our account into little caesars account um so so that's what we're going to build now and i'll do this one manually so we can see it so i'm going to first start off with a begin transaction so that's where we're going to start um and the first thing that we want to do is we want to um Why does it not like that? Oh, start. Getting confused. End of the day. There we go. Start transaction. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to um, let's start by taking the funds out of someone's account. So we're going to remove funds from someone's account. So we're going to first create the transaction. So let's say insert into transaction. And actually, you know, let's just go borrow here. We've already, we've already written this. So we're going to insert into transaction. Bam. And this one, instead of being a credit, this one's a debit because we're going to remove amounts. So we are going to say PX amount. And we're going to call this from account ID. There we go. Um, and then let's uh, update available balance. So we're going to say update account. And again, we can just borrow this. So we're going to update the account, but instead of adding a new amount to this one, we are actually going to subtract the transaction amount in the from account ID because we're moving funds from one person to another. Next, we're going to add funds to the person going into it. So let's just, uh, we can actually just take this whole thing. And we are going to say that this one's a credit and it's going to the two account ID. And then instead of subtracting it, we're going to add the transaction amount. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this just so we have it um, down here. So we don't have to do things twice. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, instead of having these variables, cause these don't exist until they're in a function. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say we're going to transfer some money from one to three, and we're going to transfer, let's say, 50 bucks. And our from account ID. So basically, I'm just going to hard code these instead of having it be dynamic, which is why we're going to fix that here in just a minute. And our two account is seven, eight, nine or the same amount of $50. I guess that needs to be two anyway, so we need to fix that 79. And that will be $50. Let's fix that before I forget. To account ID. Okay, so just to mimic this, we're gonna first start our transaction. 
we're going to remove the funds, update his balance. And at this point, you know, we could see that uh, the available balance has gone down 50 bucks. And we can actually see that transaction happen right here. He was debited $50, which is great. Now, this is where if something were to break, um, we could we could roll back. So let's let's pretend something broke. Like, oh no, something happened. We can say roll back. And when I roll this back, when we look at account, he's back up to 750. And it's like that transaction never happened. The debit's gone. It's pretty cool. So that's what happens. Oh, and I forgot to do the transaction. So we're going to hope this one works. So let's finish this all the way through. Make sure we get all the way there. And it does. So now we should be all set. We have our transaction. He's $50 short. He's $50 up. Great. We move $50 successfully. So now there's two different ways to run a transaction. The first one is just an unnamed one. We can say start transaction, or we can do a named one. So we can say save point pre transaction. So I can create this save point pre transaction and go through the same like half process. So let's start the process and say, oh, something broke. I can say roll back to pre transaction and did i spell something wrong transaction well maybe let's just roll back what did i do wrong here Looks right, doesn't it? Let's try it again here. Save point pre transaction. Gonna run this. Run this. Roll back. Hmm. Not sure what's going on there. That should work. The one thing you want to make sure. And let me check. I'm pretty sure mine's off already, but somewhere here, there's a, where is it? Edit preferences. Um, school execution. Okay. So in here under SQL execution, um, there will be this, uh, the, basically most things are in auto commit mode, meaning that when you run them, um, it's going to be auto commit. Um, so by default, that, sh that may be on, may be off, um, could cause problems, but anyways, the rollback, um, sometimes won't work because it just commits everything. Um, okay. So now let's turn this into our function here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take and copy this again. Um, and let's do, I'm going to right click down here and say create stored procedure. And we're going to create a new procedure. And we're going to call this. Did I not copy that? Let's try it again. Copy. Paste. There we go. And let's actually just take, since we've already kind of declared this, let's just snag that right there. Okay, and this one we're going to call, we're going to create a new procedure. We're going to call this a transfer funds. And we want some variables. We're going to say in to account ID, or let's start with the from, from account ID to 
account ID, name the amount. And this one's going to be an int. This one's going to be an integer. And this one is going to be a decimal. All right, and we want to put an end down here. Oh, and our commit. We want to commit. Let's see if we can make these all go in. There we go. OK. Perfect. So we're going to move funds from this account with this amount. Oh, and we need tx underscore amount is our variable. tx amount, tx amount. To account ID, to account, from account, from account. Perfect. OK. So I'm going to hit apply. Apply should have worked. Let's test it. So now we're going to say call transfer funds. We're going to move funds from 123 to 150. And we're going to make this a big transfer. We're going to make this $250. So right now, he has $600. He has $125. So let's go ahead and see if our transfer here works. OK, so it says, cannot add or update a child row of foreign key constraint fails. Yada, yada. So basically it's saying that the account ID is wrong. And that's because I put in 150 here instead of 79. So let's try it again. And there we go. So now everything worked. If we select everything from account, there we go. We have successfully moved the money. Now let's actually put that back. So now we're going to transfer it from 789 back to one, two, three. And now we're back to 600, 125, and we can see all of our transfers. Cool. So that's a that's a little bit of procedures plus transactions, which often go hand in hand. Now I often use transactions just for like whenever I'm just kind of like doing maintenance. So like, let's say I need to update someone's information. Um, so like, for example, let's select everything from the customer. Um, you know, we can see Mary Smith. So let's, let's say I want to update Mary Smith's email. So I'm going to say update customer set email equal to mary.smith at, you know, fake.com. Now, you know, we all get going really fast because if I were just to run this, which is pretty common to do, everyone's email is going to be set to the same one, which then becomes problematic because now we've just lost everyone's emails. So I have made it a habit, especially in production databases. Um, and I'm always doing that. Let's do start transaction. So I've made it a habit whenever I'm adjusting data in a production database, I'll always do this. Cause like if I do this and then say, select everything from a customer, uh Oh, I just lost everyone's emails. Well, no worries. Uh, that was just a mistake. I'm going to roll back. Bam. Now, if I go back, Hey, it's like, it never happened. And then I can say, well, let's fix that before I do that again. Um, where customer ID is equal to one. Now, in this case, if I messed up, I forgot to run the transactions. That would have been bad, um, but it looks like we're good. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, that makes sense. Perfect. And one thing, like, so again, after we made the change we want, we can just say commit and it's committed. So basically, whenever we start a transaction, it can end one of two ways. It can either be committed or rolled back. Um, 
it can't stay stagnant forever or else you're going to have issues. So, so, you know, that's why a lot of times it's built into procedures just because that way it, it works the way it should. Um, but, but I often do it just like this, um, where if I'm doing something, I'll start transaction, run it, check the results. If it's good, commit it. If it's not, roll back. Okay, um, let's take a look. Professor? What was that? Yes, I have a question. Um, so I see um, whenever you're doing the um, those updates and then the last one you did, it has uh, multiple semicolon. So do we um, run uh, those um, those codes first and then we we uh, we want the others, like especially with the um, other codes that you were uh, working on? Sorry, not sure if I can call it all that. So whenever uh, we uh, try to want a query, so usually I select uh, the codes that I'm working on and then uh -huh. click on the light bulb. But whenever I see this wig, it has multiple semicolons. Whenever you are um, inserted or doing things, but they are the same codes, but we have semicolons in some instances. Do we want them differently or? Got it. So <laughs> are you talking about right here? Yes, the commit, where, the where set, and then let's see, you have. Yes, those, and then you were on the, the SQL, you were, yeah, that one. So if you go scroll a little bit up on the, on the procedures, I believe. Yes, those. Uh, Okay, the update insert. So you you want each one um you you want the update first and then the insert and then the update again. Uh, uh yeah, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, honestly. Um, because that's kind of why we do the transaction. So that way it does um an all or nothing. So the idea is that it either all works or it doesn't, which is why we have that uh that rollback. So like if anything happens, it should automatically undo everything we did um, because of this block right here. So if any errors happen, um, it's going to roll back the the problem mm -hmm. and, and, and make it so like it never happened. So it really doesn't matter if you remove the funds and then put them in or however you do it. As long as they all get done before you say commit, then, okay. then it should be good. Okay, got it. Yep, good question. I kind of did it this way just because like for me, if if for whatever reason, you know, we wanted to backtrace something, um, I did it this way just because it's it makes logical sense. Like like if we were doing this by hand, is as long as I have a transaction record, I can kind of trace what happened to the balance um and so so that's kind of why i did the transaction and then the balance is just that way i mean it should like i said it should be all or nothing but um just uh just if something went wrong i like to to say oh i have this logged um because i can always recalculate this person's balance based on their transactions so to speak um so it's overkill but uh it's just i guess uh I've been doing this long enough that uh, it's just how my brain works, I guess. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it doesn't matter which one you do first. Okay, thanks. Yep. Great question. Um, I think we, I think that's, uh, there's a couple more. Uh, so this auto commit, set auto commit. Um, these are two like scenarios. Um, and so if auto commit is on, so set auto commit equals one, and we run a command, it's going to immediately commit, whether we are in a transaction or not. Um, so that's why it's recommended that auto commit is turned off. Um, 
And so it's going to ask you questions just to make sure, like, even if you do a transaction, um, you know, you can't roll back essentially. Um, because at, at, if auto commits on any query I run is just going to commit immediately after it just does it automatically. So like in this case, it says a web-based program you're using to insert, you know, some records. The programmer felt it was equivalent to a transaction scope. The web program leaves auto commit setting on before inserting the records in the table. So it inserts into member, customer, address, and telephones. It says after and committing values into the member and customer table, so the first two, it fails to write to the address table and then attempts to undo all inserts made by the transaction. Um, which of the followings, following tables contain data you can't undo with a rollback? Um, so I'm not going to answer these for you, but, uh, you know, based on, you know, kind of what we saw just now, it, I think it should uh, should make sense. And then kind of the flip of that, the, where if auto commit is off. Um, then it kind of walks you through an actual example with a question and then finally the last one. So, so anyways, uh, the exercise this week aren't too bad, um, especially since we did the first one here together. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, does anyone have any questions about this so far? No. Okay, perfect. All righty. Well, then I will let you guys go 15 minutes early, which I'm sure no one will complain. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, because I know that these procedure stuff um, can be a little bit um, confusing. The most important thing I would say is um, syntax highlighting and the way that it actually tries to run it can be really convoluted just in a normal file. Um, so what I would do is I would actually just, uh, you know, in the left, right click on the stored procedures and then say create a stored procedure. Um, Cause this will do like all this correct highlighting and it won't, won't freak out and it'll do proper error detection. Um, so, so anyways, yeah, I would, I would do that. Um, that's probably the biggest thing, um, but, but yeah, otherwise yeah. good luck this week and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Yep. Thank, thank you. So you. Much.